man. You cannot marry a woman without gills. You're from two different worlds. Oh, I've wasted my life. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes, and I, it's something I, I've talked around this this issue. Maybe we we hit it on it here or there, but I, I wanted to do a full up video and talk to my good friend Doc, the X Men historian, the Marvel aficionado, about the issue of pacing. It is driving me nuts, Doc. How are you doing? I am great, and uh, yeah, this is a uh, this is a topic that has been irking me on and off for the better part of a decade it's it's not so I, I mentioned it to you i mentioned a couple of times like a month ago i read shadow man number one and when i got through with it i was like holy crap like there was a beginning middle and end there's an overarching story that's going to continue but this story was a story you could read this comic and feel satisfied and i i, I was i was taken aback I was, what is this i don't get this experience much anymore and i'm doing all these comic book retrospectives we just did the uh detective comic strange apparitions it's going to be up on the channel on saturday it's a six issue comic story and there's an overarching theme of like identity and will they won't they with uh, silver saint cloud and boss thorn turning the city against batman but within it he fights he fights hugo strange he, fight, he fights uh, Deadshot, he fights the Penguin, and he fights Joker. It's the famous Jokerfish story. Oh, okay. That's where that came from? I couldn't remember. Yeah. So you get the six six story, the six issues that is an overarching story, but you get four small adventures that happen in the meantime that make the stories and the issues themselves satisfy. Like when you get a break, it you know, there might be a cliffhanger, but it's rare. Most of the time you get a resolution to something. Yeah. And I think that is a well. First of all, that is a complete lost art in comics. Um, I I don't know why it's 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 something that that should be that's kind of one hundred and one level stuff. But yeah, I mean, having a complete mid you know beginning, middle, and end to each of your comics, even inside of an overarching you know story arc is necessary and a lot of these comics these days don't have that this is this is the problem so if you go to netflix well at least here in the philippines and you put up um the blacklist you heard of that one yeah that's the one with uh james spader yeah james spader it's all i maybe it's on like season seven eight i don't know but if you go in there and it, in the very first issue there's a big mystery that's introduced about this lady and why James Spader's character has chosen her to, to go and investigate the blacklist with him. Because he's a criminal. He's the most wanted man in the world. And it's telling this big, overarching, sweeping, like multi-generational, decades-long story. But every week, you got a villain of the week. You know, this week they're going after this guy. This week they're going after another criminal. This week they're going after another criminal. And then when you get to the end, it's, you know, you get a double, you know, it, it happens over two episodes. Yeah. Episodic storytelling. Yes. There's a bigger story, a bigger narrative, but you're getting individual tales along the way. And then you go to something like Daredevil. It's just a long ass movie that's broken into parts. It's meant for binge like watching. That's why if you put it out like weekly, it kind of sucks. It, it's not as cool. You want to watch it right in a row because it's just one long ass story. Yeah, you're completely correct. Yeah, when I watched the first, you know, when I watched the season of Daredevil, if they would have released this show on, you know, ABC or a, a whatever, you know, some TV, and I had to tune in every Wednesday, even if I was just watching, you know, recording it and DVRing it and watching it the next day, I'd have gotten bored after the second goddamn episode. You could only have so many cliffhangers. There has yeah. to be resolution as you move along in the story. And that's the problem that we're getting in. So like a miniseries, a five-issue miniseries, if you tell it like that Daredevil Netflix story, fine. You're essentially just releasing a graphic novel 20% at a time. Yeah. Whatever. It was meant to be a short story, in a, uh, an elongated story compared to one issue, but a shorter story in nature anyway. But these, these monthly episodic, you know, periodical comic books, 
there needs to be something within each story that is satisfying not only satisfying to the reader that they've completed the story and got their money's worth but also something to keep them around, around dangling and, and moving on for the future unless you've got the big finale of everything like this week i read wonder girl number one from joelle jones fantastic art i'm on the yard game the character looks great it's just a setup comic nothing happens they she saves one person and it's so random that person meant nothing to anybody and it meant nothing to the story the only reason it was in there so they could say there was some action but nothing happens in, in the entire comic book it's just her talking to people with narration and then on the last page there's a fucking cliffhanger and they think that is storytelling now i'm fucking furious it's not a mini series you have to tell a complete story uh you know what a lot of this comes a lot of this comes back to um ultimate spider-man number one i don't know if you ever read it um you know bendis is the one that really kind of popularized as much as possible the the full-on decompression storytelling and that first episode that first issue of ultimate spider-man number one you know, he goes through it, he gets bitten, everything, but the only thing that happens by the end of the story is he's able to stick to a wall. That's it. He realizes that he can stick to the wall. Fascinating. You know I mean? Yeah. Like, nothing happened. Yet, I guess, be and, and you know, whenever it's a story that everybody already knows you can decompress it out and you can you can um you know give us a story everyone knows you can just not start there and then mention it along the way yeah but if you if you're already but if but if your plan is to retell a story that everybody knows you have to do it by giving them something new and the only way you can give something new is if you spread it all out and that's what that's what ultimate spider-man did um but it became this this model for the industry because one it works really really good for trades for trades um they don't have to worry about hey you know this one issue doesn't really fit but but people we need 10 pages pissed. from this special that kind of tie in where the the pre precursor for this story but it was from 10 issues earlier and yeah i know what you're saying well, they're mixing and matching shit and just putting it together as a trade yes and whereas if they do it as one just long ass issue spread out over six issues because six what months yeah. yeah what what these are are one issue plots that are spread out over six that's it and they figured this out a long time ago that they could sell that six issues for and, and it all works together it, it all fits together for the yeah, i was talking to a writer and uh i was i was talking we were talking about this kind of around this subject and he said his friend of his gave him his comic book script and he's like oh you're all wrong here your first four pages here that's your first issue Oh, I was like, you are so part of the problem. Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, it, it, you are. Look, I'm sorry, but if that's what you're doing, you're part of the problem. Stop it. Um, and, 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 you know, you need to give readers, like like television, uh, you know, going back to the television thing that you mentioned before, I think what it is is network television still has a you have to show in, show up week to week comics are the same way that you need people to show up month to month yeah you need them to be excited to come back and get the book day up exactly and so um tv writers they write which it's just, it's essentially you know like the blacklist is essentially just a police procedural that's all yes. it is it's a police procedural it's a, it's it's a, a lot villain episode. of the week story yeah it's it's csi it's um criminal minds it's law and order um where every single week now there can be overarching plots like the b plot that goes around and eventually becomes the a plot you know a lot of e even even pre um or you can have a character get away in episode three and then he comes back in episode seven yes 
Woo, we revisited something. And then you can find out in episode seven when he comes back what he was doing between episodes three and six. But I I think even even in the I think a lot of older comic writers, they they took some of the the limitations of TV. They were they grew up on television where it was essentially every episode was a one and done. You know, the Andy Griffith show back in the day or or Dragnet. And it wasn't until because there was no there was no DVR. There was no VCR. People couldn't record things. If they missed an episode, you didn't want them to drop your show because they didn't know what was going on anymore. Um, so it, it's it's a you know, a double-edged sword on this. You can have a have an ongoing B plot as long as there's not a lot of from every episode to episode, um, you know, a lot of advancement on that B plot so people can fill in the blanks if they miss an episode. The same thing with a comic book. Um, it worked so well for so long. Chris Claremont did it all the time. John Byrne did it all the time. You know, um, Roger Stern did it all the time. Uh, all this was, it was a common practice in comics and eventually like a series or a season finale where that B plot that's been kind of going on in the background with some serial killer that they're, that's not their case of the week um, becomes their case of the week for the two episode, you know, season finale. And maybe you find out he was responsible for all these weird things that have been happening, you know? Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's tie it yeah, all together. Exactly. And you do that for your season finale. It, pays off the the readers or the what the viewers that stuck around all season and it's not so ridiculous that if people miss a couple episodes they're not missing important parts of the plot they'll explain in that how all those little you know 10 second snippets of previous episodes all fit together towards this plot you just I'm completely that. convinced that a vast majority of the ongoing comic books right now should be just should be released as graphic novel volumes. Oh, absolutely. Because at least then it would be essentially like binge watching, except for the yes. fact that the problem is if they were to do that, the prices would be 50 bucks per per trade instead of 20 because there's no monthly comic pay to offset the, the the production costs, and they know they can't do it. Well, I didn't. I'm not saying that. Oh, yeah. But um, they're being written like that. The, oh, that. Yeah. They're graphic novels that are just being released, however many pages at a time. I can take it with a miniseries. Fuck it. If it's five issues, whatever. But if it's on ongoing and it's supposed to go on in theoretically indefinitely. You, you can't be doing this stuff. It's it's so infuriating, especially when you start going back and reading some of this really good classic stuff with some of these writers that really fucking got it. And it's just for us, it's like just reading this one issue of uh, of Wonder Girl, just completely frustrating. I shouldn't be impressed with Cullen Bunn's Shadow Man number one. The fact that, you know, there was a villain and he defeated him and we're moving on to the next chapter of the story at the end. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean... This is this is something. It should that, not be an achievement. There should no, be no trophy for that. And I think it's because um, serialized television has become so commonplace over the past twenty years, where shows like Lost or um, you know uh, other you know friends heroes heroes where yeah where it was kind of an ongoing it was just a long movie now they added some of those case of the week aspects of it yeah. so that it felt like but the b plot was so much bigger the a plot was almost like a b plot in its own I'm the cheerleader save the world yeah I'm the, <laughs> it, it, the a plot what would historically have been the a plot you know like that procedural for that episode kind of became the b plot while the you know the, the roles got reversed um so that it would 
it was telling an overarching story, but there was a beginning, middle and end to each episode sort of. Um, but if you did miss an issue or an episode, you were goddamn lost. Um, and I think most, most creators in, in the, the, there's been this symbiosis between, um, the, the type of comics that are being produced and the type of TV shows that are being released at the same time. And they're both learning from each other. They're copying each other and they're copying each other's worst possible aspects for keeping an audience showing up week to week or month to month. So in Man of Steel, you mentioned Bendis. It was introduced, I believe it was in Man of Steel 2 or 3, Ra's al Ghul likely was, well, possibly was the character responsible for the death of Krypton. He'd likely destroyed it. Oh, I thought that was Ragnar. What? You said Ra's said Ra's al Ghul. Ra's al- Ra's al- Ra's al- Ghul. Yeah, was, I was confused. I'm like, wait a second. I'm a, I'm a moron. It's, um, I can't remember his name now. That guy. Yeah, the, the giant almost sort of not Kryptonian thing yes yeah not doomsday thing yeah the, the knockoff character yeah. it's revealed that he's the one that did it possibly that that storyline ends i believe it's superman 14 so we're talking almost 18 months later but no probably like 18 months later because it's introduced in like issue number two and that's the story for the first 14 issues of superman guess who destroyed krypton krypton the thing that you thought did it? No. No? Might have been Rogel's R. Not really sure. Wasn't spelled out, but that was the end of the story. Oh, so we just never even bothered to answer the question. Awesome. The Good answer, job. The answer was maybe. Oh. It's like, are you shitting me? I stuck around for subpar shitty writing for 18 months. I didn't get, get the fucking mystery. Yeah. <laughs> like, they didn't even bother to answer the question that they were asking for for 18 months no but but they're, they're copying each other you know you see and especially as streaming becomes much more and, and like dumping an entire season on one day becomes much more prevalent you're going to see it happening more and more and more in comics they we, want to we do all, that they gotta release are. it like tko in a fucking bundle yeah where you can buy the 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 box set you could buy the or the trade all at once. Yeah. Fuck it. That's how you're going to ride it. That's how you should be distributing it because it's, it's frustrating. Yeah, it, it, it truly is. And I mean, we actually, you know what? I won't say that we're going to see more of it. We're already seeing more of it. Uh, you know, what's his fuck? Uh, Tom King basically wrote Batman for the omnibus. Yeah. Um, you know, to get two omnibuses out of it. You know, a lot of these guys, it, it's gone from, comics industry has gone from writing for the issue or writing for the month. Hell, they would write for a third of the issue on really early, like yeah, a lot of Silver Cons, Age. In the beginning, had backup stories. It was 14 yeah. pages to tell your story. Yeah, same with Amazing Fantasy. AF-15 is not a full 22 issues of Spider-Man. It's got like two other stories in there. Um, and even even early issues of X-Men, there would be two stories in 22 pages. So it went from telling your chapter to writing for the issue to writing for the kind of story arc, and it would be two or three issue story arcs, to writing for a good six issue trade, to writing for just any trade, to writing for now we're at writing for the omnibus. Yeah. It's terrible, Doc. It's it's not a good reading experience. And I know people are going to be like, fuck you, Wes. Wonder Girl was great. The, the art was. That story sucked because it wasn't a story. That's the problem. Go read Heroes Are Born. It's fun because it's stupid. But go tell me what the fucking story is for the first three issues. Well, none of it's cohesive, and there's nothing definitively accomplished in fucking any of it. It's well, just gibberish being spread out there so they can say they have a fucking event. Well, we saw that with the first issue of Sword as well, where it was 
nothing happened there. It, it barely even zero established. Issue. Yeah, it was a zero issue. Uh, back in the day, those were literally zero issues. Free. Yeah. Well, not Motion even, pre- material to get people to, to get interested in the characters. Even if it wasn't free, it was issue. It was, you know, you'd have issue one, two, three, four, zero. And then, you know, five, six, seven, right around, you'd release the zero issue around the time that the trade for the first collection is coming out. So people would be like, oh, I'm going to pick up this, this zero issue. I didn't pick up the first five issues. I'll read this zero issue. Oh, wait, I kind of like these characters. I'll pick up the trade that's coming out and issue six. Yeah. Boom. Problem solved. Um, Because you and saw you that. Sounded just like Kelly Sue there for a second. Oh. If you don't me. like my decompressed storytelling, don't buy my book. Well, Problem solved. Yeah, and everybody stopped buying her books, so everybody stopped buying comics too. <laughs> Feels like it, man. With the storytelling, there's no craft anymore. It's there. It's the blind leading the blind. It's it's. It, I think there's failures gone in every level, but a, a comic book for five dollars should be an enjoyable experience. There should be very seldom times where at the end the climax is the superhero didn't win, the bad guy got away, and there's a cliffhanger that they're going to meet again. But for the most part, you should be able to tie something up in an issue. Yeah, but I think this all comes back to who the the, the writing influences are, the writing and editing influences. And it's gone from being um, one and done procedurals or you know an episode of Bonanza or even the monsters where every issue every episode kind of resets but there might be some little b plot for progression down the line um towards and eventually you get to current streaming older creators were influenced by those those shows and that where and, and, and even movies where there was no sequel sequels weren't a thing that occurred you, you wrote a movie. There was no Casablanca 2. There was no Gone with the Wind 2. Technically, there's a Bond, Gone with the Wind sequel. Yeah, I, you know what I mean, though. I'm just saying. But but even huge movies didn't really, like, studios didn't think, hey, let's make another one of this. Let's make something. They, they wanted to make an, something else with a, more success than that. Um, All right, Doc, we got to wrap this up. We, we're going long. But yeah, but I guess my point is that it's the influences and the way that all the media has kind of gone to this serialized, decompressed, or binge it um, influence is going to influence the comics. And we're going to get more and more and more. It's going to keep going that way until you start with, I think, a reversal in on television. 